Hello, uh, in this video I try to continue on uh, repairing the Robotron typewriter. Sometimes it behaves a little bit strange, uh, so I try to clean the keyboard first and see if it's uh, causing any problems. The actual keyboard contacts are on the bottom on the PCB, so I guess I have to clean them a little bit. It seems it's not possible to get the keyboard out of the device, so I will have to clean it uh, in the device. There were quite of a lot of small screws, I hope I don't lose them. And here's how the keyboard works. Uh, the small black conductive tip uh, is touching the PCB and making contact. This red tube uh, was used uh, as the, some kind of gasket. You may be wondering why there are PCB traces going uh, to the top edge and bottom edge of the PCB. They are going nowhere. My guess is that the traces were connected together outside of the PCB and used for electroplating the contacts. The contacts doesn't look so bad, but anyway I will clean them. On the PCB are also some metal tabs, but I have no idea what are they doing here, because uh, they are not used uh, as a jumpers, maybe for some testing. And the resistance is close to 0 ohms, so I don't know why they uh, don't uh, connect it uh, traces on the PCB and why they use these bars. So I used some isopropyl alcohol and paper towels to clean the contacts. I have also discovered that each key has two springs in it. And then more cleaning of conductive rubber. Ok, let's put it together and see if it's working better than before. First ground connected. Second ground connected. I also have to put printing tape back to the machine. And start. So the typewriter is initialized, uh, now I have to put some paper in it. And it's not working at all. Another reset. And that buzzing tone uh, is not supposed to be there, so something is uh, again wrong. Ok, few resets later and it's not still working. You can see on the keyboard that all the yellow LEDs are on, which is not ok. One last try and I will be really angry after this. That carrier smashing to the left stop is not ok. At this stage I have decided to throw this device to the dumpster. But before I will do that, I'll take a look on the LED matrix display and, and other control boards. I took away the display module of the device, so I can better probe the signals on it. 
So just to remind you, the main board is connected by flat cable to the LED control board and then it's connected to the LED display board itself. So with this letter F displayed, I can use uh, my multimeter or oscilloscope to find out how these matrices are driven. So my guess is that it's 5 volt logic, but uh, that's all I can do with multimeter. Let's move to the oscilloscope. So after some probing, I have discovered that uh, some of the 8 top pins uh, selects individual rows. And uh, then under every letter there is a small chip, which is most probably some shift register. Here's the close-up of uh, how some top pins are connected to each rows. Here's the close-up of the chip, uh, which is uh, seated on ground plane. From the bottom is connected uh, clock, uh, data and some strobe signal. And from the top the chip is bonded to five columns of the matrix display. Here's another close-up of the chip and it looks really great uh, in the red plastic. And let's move to another board. This infrared sensor will send uh, information whether the paper is inserted. There's a photodiode and infrared LED and it works interesting way. When I cover the photodiode it will turn on the infrared LED. Not sure exactly why. And here you can see the output uh, on the oscilloscope. Just ones and zeros. Now let's move to the main processor board. Uh, I'm interested uh, how fast the crystal is and how fast the CPU is running. So the crystal is 9.832 MHz, but the processor could run slower, so I will have to probe it individually. So the input clock for the processor is connected to pin number 6. And it's 2.45 MHz, so it's quarter of the crystal frequency. Now I'm probing the driver board for uh, stepper motors. I would like to know if the voltage to the motor coils are applied constantly or if there's some kind of PWM. And it is PWM at 19 kHz. And since the typewriter is not working reliably enough, so I will throw away all electronics and maybe keep the mechanics for some experiments later. The driver board goes also away. The main processor board has not any components on the back, just a few bodge wires you can see. Here is the driver board, no bodge wires at all, good work. In the first part of this series I was thinking that this part uh, was a filter, but I was wrong. It is actually a battery, not sure what kind of battery or if it's rechargeable, I don't think so. Here I'm looking for 5V and ground on the power connector. I use the 74 uh, logic parts uh, as uh, helpers because they have 5V on right up pin and ground on lower left pin. Here is the power connector for driver board and I will measure the voltages directly. And here's a pro tip, don't measure DC voltage with AC voltage set on your multimeter, you will measure nothing. Okay, DC, that could work. So on this processor, 
power cable I have 2 5 volts and 24 volts I'm not sure what that 1.5 volt is for and this driver board power cable has 5 volt uh, and 2 24 voltage rails so right now I have no idea what to do with these mechanics one option is to do uh, custom electronics which will control paper drum then the carriage movement stepper motor then I will need to control the letter ring for selecting letters also there's solenoid for lifting the print tape and uh, also there is need to control the stepper motor for moving the print tape also uh, there's a solenoid hammer so thank you for watching your subscription will be motivation for me to do another interesting videos and see you next time.